Hi everybody and welcome to So Fun. If you haven't met me before, my name is Rosemary. I have been working in the Arvada store for Rocky Mountain Sewing and Vacuum for about six years and this is my first time doing So Fun and I, I hope you like all the projects that I brought you today. So what I thought we'd do is jump right in and show some of the garments that I have made and this first one right here is called the Cashmere. It's a Concord t-shirt and I actually went looking for this t-shirt because I wear a lot of sweaters to work and um, I get very very cold so I wanted a t-shirt that had long sleeves I also wanted one that would be long enough I am a mature curvy woman and I don't like a t-shirt that's going to come to my waist right here and right up all the time. I also don't like those boxy kind of men's like t-shirts that have a high neck that's going to choke you or this doesn't have any shape to it. So that was one of the things I really liked about this t-shirt. It has curves built into it. It also has you measure your bust line and your bra cup size so that this is going to fit you exactly the way you want it to. It has a scoop neck so it doesn't choke you or a v-neck so that's an option and one of the other things I really liked about this pattern is that it has directions for doing a v-neck. There's so many women that I know myself included that struggle with the v-neck on a t-shirt to make it lay flat and look professional um, and this one gives you really good directions. Okay, I confess I did not make the V-neck. I don't really care for that, but it is in there, and it's a good thing for you if you want to make a V-neck. So the one that I made is this one right here. Um, I went to the store, and I bought some stretchy purple fabric, and you know a lot of the fabrics nowadays that are in the stores have a four-way stretch, so this one has a lot of stretch to it. And although I could have probably done it on my sewing machine. I decided to do it on my serger. I have a brand new Foff serger that has five threads. It has a cover hem in it and an overlock and it does a two thread and it has a computer. So it's a really great serger for doing these new stretch fabrics that are out there. Um, I went ahead and I did the cover hem on the sleeves and on the bottom of it. So it finished it up really fast. It also tells you to cut out a piece of the knit fabric rather than put ribbing on it and put that around the neckline, which makes it not only look store-bought and professional, but it also has a really pretty edge to it. And I used the cover hem around the edging. Another thing I really liked about this t-shirt is the fact that not counting the embroidery, which is, uh, this is an OESD pattern called Dressed in Daisies. Um, that took me a little bit of time, but other than that, the t-shirt went up really fast. I think I made it in about an hour. So I'm definitely gonna go buy some more fabric and make myself a few more t-shirts that I can wear under my sweaters at work. <clears throat> so the next pattern that I had for you is also, it basically is called a t-shirt. It's a the Verdun woven t-shirt. So it's not made with stretch fabrics, it's made with woven fabric. And I also chose this because number one, it was very, very easy to make. I did not put the pocket on it. It doesn't have sleeves, so I don't have to worry about inset sleeves. But the biggest reason why I bought it was because I wanted to be able to add some decorative sewing to the front of it. And what I ended up with was I ended up with this little shirt right here. And I did a whole lot of decorative sewing down the front of it. As I said before, I've been working for Rocky Mountain for about six years. I've been selling sewing machines for some 20 years. And I can't tell you how many people come in and say, um, I don't need any stitches on my sewing machine to straight in a zigzag is all I'm gonna need. Um, but you know what, once you start sewing and you start doing things, you will find that a lot of those stitches are really nice. And when I teach a class and I say, this is what you can do with your decorative stitches on your machine, people mostly say, oh, can I do that? Is that on my sewing machine? So that's one of the things I did on here. I did a little cross stitch. I did a little um, satin stitching. I even did some in insertion and some pin tucking. And one of the things I wanted to show you is there is a needle that you can purchase that's called a wing needle. It's wonderful on your sewing machine. It actually creates little holes on your blouse and um, almost all of the new modern computerized sewing machines have stitches that will um, 
use a wing needle and get just a little bit extra in your finished product when you finish making the blouse. So I hope you really like this because I think it was something really fun to do. And it is long enough, it's even longer in the back. So it's something that we as women can wear. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move these out of the way. And I have one more garment that I wanna show you. And this is this little girl's dress. And here is the pattern for it. It's actually called Penelope, and I have to make a confession. Mallory actually showed this in So Fun probably about three years ago when her daughter was a little girl. And at that time, I didn't have any small girls in my family, and now I do. I have a little great-granddaughter that's about the right age for this. So I thought this would be really fun to make. And it's a real simple little dress. I know we're in January, but summer's coming, so a nice easy su uh, summer dress is something that's that everybody needs to make if you have a little girl in your life the other reason why i wanted to make this dress was because i found this lunch box lunch box quilt design it's called ocean odyssey it has it's all applique with fish on it and it is obviously a quilt but i didn't want to make it as a quilt i wanted to put it on this little girl's dress I have a lot of experience making little girls' dresses, and I can tell you that um, if you put really thick embroidery on children's clothing, not only do the kids not like to wear it because it's stiff and uncomfortable, but mom doesn't like you very much because it has to be ironed. So this doesn't add a lot of bulk to the little dress, and but it does add a lot of fun to it. And I was able to use the shadow play fabrics that we have at Rocky Mountain Sewing and Vacuum to make this, and I added a little contrast ruffle to it in green, and there's even a ruffle on the back. Um, another thing that's really nice about this is it has big old snaps on the back of it so you don't have to work that hard to try and put buttonholes in it and make it work went up really fast and cute and i was very happy with the results in it so the next thing that i wanted to show you is um is this purse pattern and it's called the bowler bag and um so as I said before, I've been working for Rocky Mountain for about six years, and I have seen a lot of so funds, and I've seen a lot of really nice professional bags that are done mostly by Tracy, and I have not made a lot of purses other than really simple bags. So this was a little bit of a challenge for me. This was a, a really basic little bag pattern, um, but even then, as I opened it up and started reading the the um, instructions, I was like, whoa, oh my gosh, can I do this? So. One of the things I would tell you is start at the beginning, read the first part, do that, cut it out, and then read the second part and do that, and then read the third part and do that, and take it one step at a time, and you'll get through it, and you'll make a nice little bag. But one of the things I thought was, as long as I'm going to make this bag, I want to do something really fun. Um, we, uh, the embroidery site that Brother has, because of the new movie that's come out called Cruella, has new Cruella designs in it. And I saw those on embroidery, and I thought, I have to make a Cruella purse. And I also went to the store, and I found this really great fuzzy uh, fur fabric that looks like Dalmatians. And I thought, oh, well, yeah, that's got to go in there. So um, that's what I ended up doing. This is like a, a faux suede that's on that the main part of the purse is made out of and then it has the fur on the outside and i even lined it with cruella fabric so let's open this up so i can show you the inside it has cruella fabric on the inside it has pockets and it has a zipper in it that was really easy to put in i was really surprised at how easy it was to go ahead and finish up this bag it does have um some really nice hardware, which I brought in some hardware so you can order hardware to go with it. And then of course I put the Cruella embroidery on both sides. So I've got one on this side and one on this side. I have to tell you, when I finished this up, I wasn't really happy with how centered the Cruella embroidery design was and I wasn't about to rip it out and start over again. So what I did was I used some wash away stabilizer and some tool and I embroidered another Cruella on that. And then I tucked down the edges and pinned it on the, on the uh, bag and hand stitched it on there. And if you look at it, you would never know that I added that afterwards. It worked out really good and now it looks a lot more balanced. 
which is exactly what I wanted. This bag has got little short handles, so you could use it as a carry-on to the airport, but it's also got a nice long handle too. So I was really happy with the way it came out and I'm definitely gonna use this bag. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few of these things off of here because we've got some things that have cluttered up a little bit. Now, before I move on to the next project that I wanna show you, I did wanna show you this book here. It is called Stress Free Sewing Solutions, a no-fail guide to garments um, for the modern sewist. And the reason why I brought this book in is because I think we can always l use a little bit of help. Just a little bit of history about me. I grew up in a family of nine kids and my mother made every stitch of clothes that we wore. So I was sewing from the moment I could sit up to a sewing machine, which is probably true about a lot of you that are out there. And um, I, when I got married, the very first thing I bought from my house was a sewing machine so that I could start making clothes for my children. And with all that said, I felt like I was an expert sewer, but as my children started getting older, there were so many things I didn't understand about sewing, like how to put a sleeve in properly, how to make a collar look professional and not sag. I still remember when my son was about 14 years old, I made him a shirt and bless his heart, he said, thanks mom, I really like it, but it, it was really bad. Um, so there's always room for improvement. There's always things that you can learn. And that's one of the things I like about this book. It actually has a lot of information in it. it this page right here tells you how to put that V-neck in. That's hard to do on a lot of t-shirts and then there's another part in here that actually explains how to put that sleeve in so it doesn't look like snow white but it looks like a man's sleeve that's nice and flat that's eased in there properly so that you can tell people doesn't this look like I bought it at the store no I made it isn't it wonderful so always um, keep those books in there keep reading keep learning and you'll discover there's a lot more things that you can um, learn about your sewing skills so the next thing that I have that I want to show you is an embroidery pattern we always have to have some kind of an embroidery pattern in this one and this one's really fun it's a pickle pie in the hoop design I know that we've all made those mug rugs for Christmas so um, you've already experienced it you already know how to do it and this is just a new one that you can do that's a lot of fun and the ones that I made um, those of you who know me know that I get a little bright sometimes so these are really bright fabrics I just pulled out of my stash and put them together but they were really fun little um, mug rugs that you can put on your coffee table and then there's also a little cup cozy that goes with it that matches it that you can put around your coffee cup so just another thing for us to keep making that's in the hoop easy and fast and makes a great gift especially with Valentine's Day coming up okay so the next thing that I wanted to show you is called it's a book and it's called Tilda's seasonal ideals ideas collection and I have to tell you that when I saw this book I was completely blown away um, I make a lot of dolls I love making dolls and this book has got a lot it's got quilts in it it's got pin cushions in it it's got um, just a whole lot of really fun stuff but it also has dolls in it and I have to confess I got a little carried away and I made several dolls out of this so here's some of my dolls that I made this was the first one and she has a doll um, a, a sewing theme on her clothes and these are just like a, they're called a little garden doll so she's got overalls and she's got leggings underneath it it was just really fun to make um, one of the things that it tells you to do is to cut out these little shoes out of felt and then sew them on there well when you're sewing when you're making a lot of different things on dolls sometimes it's easier to not try and sew and one of the things I found that is really easy to use is Fabri-Tac I love it it's like hot glue that's not hot it works really really fast and you can glue these little shoes on here and a put a button on the front or a piece of ribbon hold it with a pin for just a few seconds and it's glued on there I actually used the glue for a few other things like gluing her hat in place and putting some buttons on it, it made it a little bit easier and faster I would not 
um, be without Fabri-Tac in my house for all the different kinds of craft projects that we do. We were just talking about it the other day. Um, why burn your fingers when you can use Fabri-Tac because it's so much nicer. Um, so another thing I wanted to tell you about is in the book, she tells you to uh, add a quarter inch to the pattern and then cut it out and sew it. But because I've made lots of dolls in the past, I have to tell you one of the best things that you can do when you're, um, when you're making a doll is cut out your pattern exactly the size that it's in the book. Put it on freezer paper and iron it on. Freezer paper that you buy at your regular grocery store has wax on the back of it, and you can iron it directly to it. Now this one, what I did, these are her legs. I sewed the skin fabric to the legging fabric with the seam in the middle, and then I ironed it on. And then I take it to my sewing machine, and I literally put the needle right up against the paper and sew around that. And then after you do that, then you cut it out with a quarter inch. It's gonna make your shapes come out exactly the way you want them without having any problems with it not being curvy where it's supposed to be curvy. And then, this is one of the, the arms here that I've cut out already. Then all you have to do is just peel that uh, wax paper off and you've got your pattern piece all ready to go. Another thing that she doesn't tell you that I would really recommend is to use a hemostat to turn it inside out. I have a hemostat here, and if you've never used a hemostat in your sewing before, they work really great for pulling those needles through that don't wanna pull through difficult fabrics, or even if you've got a needle stuck in your machine and you can't get it out, you can grab it really tight with a hemostat and pull it out. But it also works really good for turning things inside out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my hemostat and I'm gonna put it through here put it all the way down, then I open it up and push the fabric down into the sleeve and then you just work it this way and voila, I got that little teeny tiny hand turned inside out in a matter of seconds. It works really good and then when I go to stuff it, I'm gonna use my hemostat to push that stuffing all the way down into the little tiny tips and everything. You'll be very happy with what you end up with in the end when you finish your doll. Another thing I wanted to show you was, I'm gonna get my doll right here. So she tells you to get some yarn and pin it to the doll's head and then sit there and sew it on to the doll. That takes too long for me. I'm not gonna put that much time in it. So I, I made a little doll that's not finished yet. And I have some yarn and what I've done is I actually took the yarn and pulled it apart. You pull it apart, it kind of turns into a wool roving that's a little bit easier to work with and it makes it a little fuzzier and curly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna just lay it across my doll's head. So this is called a felting needle. They're very, very sharp. You can hurt yourself really easy with them, so be careful. But they have little barbs on the side of them and what's really great about them is you can take it and kind of push it down into your doll like this and it pushes the fibers of the hair right down into that doll. And you can kind of just do this in front of the TV set. It's really fun. And as I push down and make it stick to my doll, I do a little bit of hairdressing and try and get my, my hairdo exactly the way I want it. And so there's no sewing involved. It's faster and it's a little bit more fun um, for putting your, your hair on your doll. And it gives it a little bit more dimension. As you can see, the dolls that I have here, she's got like cute little ponytails after I put it on there. I used my Fabri-Tac and glued um, a daisy on the front of her. Uh, it's just another way to just be a little bit more creative, have a little bit more fun. This one is a little bit different look. She's got pantaloons and a jacket, and she has a little crocheted hat that I crocheted, and then I glued the little um, yarn balls on the side to get her that little outfit. And another thing I really like about this doll is that she just has two little tiny dots for eyes and a little bit of blush on her face. And you don't have to be an artist. It's very easy for you to make these dolls. So that was one of the things I really liked about this book. What did I do with the book? Ha ha ha, here it is right here. 
Okay, so um, so there's a few other things in here. Like I said, that she has a pin cushion in here and a sewing book that's really cool. I thought the pin cushion was really cute. I didn't make it, but I will definitely make it in the future. Um, I also found these little purses in here. Look how cute these little purses are. Really easy to put together. I don't even know how practical they are, but they were just really fun to look at. So I thought I definitely have to make one of those purses. So, um, this is one of the fabric packs that we have for you. It's called Sweet Beginnings. It's got a lot of little flowers and it also has some gingham checks in it. If you look at this little doll right here, I, um, I use the, the gingham checks. I sewed them together like you would do like a little uh, patchwork quilt and then I cut out the outfit with all those pieces and I thought it came out really, really cute. I was really pleased with it. And then I took some of the floral prints that were in here and I made this little purse and it was really fun to make. It has um, a Floriani stitch and shape on the inside of it to give it some shape. You could also use um, this, which is called soft and stable. You could do that if you wanted it to be a little bit softer. I did use the, the soft and stable in my other purse that I made. And then I lined it with a polka dot and put a polka dot bow on the front of it. It's a really simple little purse. It does have a pocket in it. It would be something that would be fun to take out on just a quick little outing that you want to do that you just need a small things for a clutch. So that was what I, uh, the other thing that I made in that book. Okay, so before we move on to some of the quilts I've made, I wanted to show you a few of the other notions that I brought with me. Um, one of the ones that I have here, this is just a fun little calendar. It's called the Quilty Calendar 2022. It's a really nice little uh, book that'll fit in your purse that you can make notes in for different classes and stuff. And at the same time, it's got some quilt squares in it. So it's just those of us who've gotten a little quilt crazy, you'll definitely appreciate this little book to have as your calendar for your 2022. Another um, notion that I have today is called slap and wrap peels. I'm, I'm sure you've seen them before. We've had them in the store before, but they're a really great thing for those of us who are embroiderers who need something to wrap around those stabilizers and keep them a little more organized. Um, as I say, always say organization is one of my faults. I'm not as organized as I'd like to be, but any little thing that'll help me along to do that is a great thing. And I think this is a really good product with where you don't have to put a lot of work into it, put a rubber band around it or something like that. It just, you slap it and it wraps around. You can even put around some of those big spools of thread that you may have um, in your house. And another one that I kind of meant to bring up a little bit earlier when I was talking about the garment making is just this little tool. It's called um, the Fashion Multi Tool. Those of you who um, want to make some adjustments to your patterns, need a little bit of help drawing those buttonholes in, um, making some changes. In fact, the back of it actually has some instructions on how to make some adjustments to your armholes or to the hem, Me do little measuring. Why not have it all in one tool? So this is a great tool if you're a dressmaker or a garment maker and you need a little bit of help. It even has a sharp little point for turning those corners on your collars. Um, so I think that's something that was really good. I was really happy that we brought that in. Okay, so um, the next thing that I have for you, let's start doing a little bit that has to do with our quilting. And the first one I have is just one of these little cards that we've had in So Fun before. It's by Running Doe Quilts and it's called Propelled. And I'll tell you the reason why I wanted this was because I've got this little thing going around in my head where I've been wanting to do a Spider-Man quilt for my great grandson. Um, he absolutely loves Sp Spider-Man. If you ask him what his name is, his name's Peter Parker. Uh, he doesn't like his real name anymore. So I thought I have to make him a Spider-Man quilt. And the embroidery site has got a whole lot of really cute Spider-Man um, embroidery design. So one of the things about this is it has big squares in it. So you can put some embroidery on it. So what I did was I downloaded some of those Spider-Man designs that are on embroidery. And I went shopping to Joann's and I bought some Spider-Man fabric and I combined them all together and I made this quilt. Um, another thing I did was as I started to embroider the Spider-Mans out, I went to my Stellaire sewing machine and in the design center, they have a quilt pattern that looks like bricks. And I thought, wouldn't that be really fun to put around my embroidery designs? And 
just so that it pops and it shows instead of hiding in the background I used a gray color instead of a white on it so that you can really tell that that's supposed to be bricks behind him and I don't know if you know this but if you own a Stellaire a dream machine or a luminaire sewing machine you can save the shape of your embroidery design and bring it into design center and put your quilting behind it so this quilting goes right up against the embroidery designs you'd never even know that I did that completely in the embroidery machine and I was really happy with the way this came out I think my little great-grandson is going to absolutely love this quilt okay so the next um, book that I have for you is called Scrap Basket Bounty. Um, it says 16 single block quilts that make your scraps shine. And when I saw this, I thought to myself, um, well, I've got a whole box full of scraps. So I took this very literally and I decided that I was just going to do this in scraps. And the one that I did was called Three Patch, three patch Chain. And the picture makes it, you can actually see the light and the dark in the squares. Well, as I started to put this together, I tried to stick with light and darks, but it really didn't come out to look that way. It came out to look like this. So it really looks like a scrap quilt. And it has little teeny tiny squares all over it. And um, it was fun because I was able to use a lot of the scraps. There's no rhyme and reason to the fabric that's in here. It's just all the scraps from my scrap bin. Um, but I have to tell you that the more I worked on this with these little teeny tiny squares, the more I thought to myself, this is not going to be a, a full size quilt. It's going to be a baby quilt. So um, it didn't get very big. But um, I have another great grandchild coming any day now, so I think it'll be perfect for her. I think she's really going to like it. And then I went to the store and I found some flannel with little ABCs on it, which kind of finishes the idea of it being a baby quilt. Uh, but like I said, I, I had a lot of fun with it. I just got tired of the little tiny squares really fast. So the next thing that I made from this book, I thought I'm not going to do those little tiny squares again. I'm going to go right into uh, something that's got some bigger squares in it. And I did the one that's called graffiti. And what's fun about this one is it's got some little bow ties in it. It's got some strips and it's got some squares. So what I decided to do was I was going to go to the store instead of using a scrap quilt and buy some batching fabrics and make kind of a coordinated quilt. So this is the quilt that I made from that pattern. And I went online and I bought the Nightmare Before Christmas fabric. I found some coordinating fabrics. And then I went back to the store to add some other fabrics just to make it a little bit more fun, like the stripes and um, some of the other ones that are in there to finish the quilt up. I was really pleased with the way this came out. It was really fun to make it. I have a daughter-in-law whose name is Sally and she absolutely loves Nightmare Before Christmas and I, I think that, um, that she's really gonna enjoy this. One of the things I did though with this fabric was that I had to fussy cut some of these squares to get Jack and Sally centered in the middle of the square so that it didn't look like just a bunch of arms and legs and stuff. So I did get this this is called quilt in a day a complete fussy cut ruler set and it has what like there's six different rulers in here that you can use to fussy cut you can lay, put it right up against your square and you can get your characters in your quilt or your roses in your quilt or anything else that's in your fabrics you can fussy cut them get them lined up make sure they're centered and you'll be so much happier with the results when you're all finished with your quilt another thing i did was I put this in my Stellaire again to do my quilting on it and I just did a, a random stippling stitch all over it but I thought it would be really fun to put Jack in it so there is Jack in the quilting if you look at it and he's just a matter of circles and a smiley face so it was really easy for me to do that I put it in the middle of the hoop and then added the random stippling around it and I was really happy with the result when it was all finished Okay, so the next one that I have for you is called Pleasant Valley Creations. Um, it's, it says Simple Illusions. She does it in grays and a little bit of red in the center. For the cross, um, I used scrap fabrics 
that I had left over from a quilt that I made last year that had a lot of sewing notions on it. But I had a lot of this fabric left over. I bought it as a kit as what uh, one of the Sew Fun presenters actually did last year. And um, I went ahead and I just um, sewed this together with all those coordinating fabrics. And then I went back to the store and I found some roses to, to do it with. And I quilted it in my Solaire sewing machine using some of the background fills and everything. And I even finished it up with a really pretty uh, floral print on the back. I think this one is completely different than any of my other quilts because it's kind of like a soft, feminine, romantic look quilt. It's big enough to use as a lap quilt. I'm probably gonna keep this for myself because I really like the way it came out. Okay, so the last thing I have for you today is um, is, is this quilt is actually a tie quilt, believe it or not. So if you watched our Christmas party that we had, um, Mallory told you we were going to start introducing some books. We're going to have kind of like a book club that we can do on our Facebook. And this is the very first book. And I have to make a confession to you. Um, when they passed these out and they said everybody takes the book in the order that they come out, Rosemary gets tie-dyed. And I looked at that and I thought to myself, I don't want to do tie-dyed. I am a widow and I know that a lot of people take a lot of comfort out of making quilts for their loved ones out of their ties, but that wasn't me. And I thought to myself, somebody trade with me, please. But everybody said, you have to do the number one book, Rosemary. So I said, okay, I'll figure that out. And then I started reading it and the book is about a widow and her daughter trying to move her out of her home into a senior community. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I really don't want to read this book. But I have to tell you, I loved this book. It was so interesting to read. It's all about starting out new, making new friends, learning new skills, um, taking quilt classes. We all love quilt classes. And the lady in the book didn't know how to quilt. So she learned a whole lot about that. Um, it was just really, not only a good thing for me to hear about starting your life again and finding new interests, but also it's uh, the books just keep on going. I have to tell you, I've read three of them already. They're just really good and interesting. And they throw in a little mystery, a little murder, a little quilting, just keeps you, and a little romance. So that makes it really fun. So back to the quilt, um, I still didn't make a tie quilt. I just didn't want to make a quilt out of old ties. So what I did was I took the technique that the lady teaches you in the book and the pattern is in the book um, and I instead of paper piecing I cut muslin squares. I started with the center shape that was sh and I cut my fabric shaped like a tie and then I worked my way out until I had a 12 and a half inch square and then I evened it all up and then I made a whole bunch of them and sewed them together and I was really happy because I used a lot of sewing themes so basically I have a sewing quilt now. I enjoyed it a whole lot. Um, I did use a pre-made embroidery design that had to do with sewing. I wasn't real thrilled with the way the quilting was in it, so I had to put it in my software, change some sizing, mess it up a little bit. Um, and in the end, it turned out to be a really, a really fun quilt, and I enjoyed making it, and it's, it'll be another one that'll go in my collection. Um, so that is the last project I have to show you today. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and that you enjoyed some of the projects and you'll come into the store and see our trunk show and see some of the new designs that, uh, the new patterns that we have for you. Um, have a nice day.